Oblivion got remade, not remastered. Nvidia fixes their drivers and Intel, this might be what they need to get back into the CPU game. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, April 23rd, 2025. We're gonna start off today with the news that shook every millennial gamer and I guess older Gen Z gamer to their core. Bethesda having the announcement of what they're calling the lie that is the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion remaster launching on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation 5, all being immediately available at the time that their announcement happened. I'm not gonna talk too much about the game side of things. They g give you the regular one. You pay $10 extra for the deluxe edition, which gives you extra horse armor. It seems to be making a lot of people happy. It's rebuilt in Unreal Engine 5, which makes it a remake, not a remaster. I still don't know why they're calling it that. But from a technical side of things, it actually features quite a bit of new technology, FSR 4 and DLSS 4 being supported at launch, as well as the PC specs. Not that bad in terms of a modern game with all of those feature sets in Unreal Engine 5. Minimum specs is a 2600X or a 6800K with a RX 5700 or a 1070 Ti and 16 gigs of RAM. Recommended is 3600X or a 10600K with a 68 100 XT or an RTX 2080. Honestly, pretty mild specs for what appears to be a pretty good looking remake of what is a lot of people's fan favorite version of the Elder Scrolls. The only thing that's not uh, gentle is the 125 gigabyte download size that it requires. However, with its lower system requirements, it is also Steam Deck verified, which is something that I know that Kyler didn't expect. He was like, I, I love this, but I'm not gonna be able to play it on my Steam Deck. You'll be able to, Kyler. Congratulations. So let me know if you're excited for the Oblivion remake. Reese is actually currently streaming it over on the UFD Tech Twitch channel right as of the time of recording because he could not wait. This dude absolutely into Oblivion. This is everything he needed to make his life better today. And you can make your life better with today's video sponsor. With the state of the PC components market, us poor gamers are having to budget our savings level amounts to afford new parts. Luckily, saving for a brand new 5090 or 5060 can be easier than you thought with the help from today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a super easy to use app that helps you save more and manage your money better than you ever could on your own. Personally, I love being able to set my budgets and cut back on spending. Rocket Money has helped its members save up to $740 per year when you use all of the app's premium features. That adds up to pretty much a new CPU if I'm doing my math right. Budgeting is also super helpful. With Rocket Money, you can create your own custom budget in no time at all. The app will show you where your money goes and even identify your big spending categories. From there, you can receive insights on how to always keep yourself on budget. You'll even get notified for upcoming charges or when your balance is low so you can avoid those nasty overdraft fees. On top of that, Rocket Rocket Money makes it super easy to save some cash by automatically analyzing your accounts and letting you know the optimal time to stash some coins away. Pick your goal, your preferred savings frequency, and just watch your money pile grow. If anything changes, you can always edit, pause, and withdraw at any time. So now it's time for you to afford that GPU or CPU upgrade, my friend. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Maybe Nvidia needs Rocket Money to keep track of everything that's going on in their profiles when it comes to drivers because they finally patched out some of the issues that came out from them fixing other issues with their latest driver update. There's a new hot fix that's fixing the GPU temperature monitoring that wasn't happening on the latest cards because of this new update that they did to fix some of the black screen and instability issues. I've been seeing reports people are still struggling with it as well as having these new things like not being able to monitor their temperatures. Allegedly, this hot fix helps out a little bit. I've also been seeing a lot of people just say, go back to the December driver that was the most stable one. That's the one that's going to keep you at least somewhat stable to play the Oblivion remake. Let me know if you're having issues with the drivers down below in the comments. Well, maybe Reese gets you deals. I don't know. He said he's going to stay up all night streaming this Oblivion game, so he, he might not even be awake enough to do that. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet, and you guys get sleepy Reese today because the Oblivion remaster is way too good, and I spent way too much time playing it last night. But uh, hey, we got some deals today. And starting us off, we have this GK Gamma K TK75 HEV2, which is their wired Hall Effect mechanical keyboard going for only $79.99 with the coupon applied, making it $10 off. I have to say this is one of the cleanest and most gorgeous looking keyboards I've seen in a hot minute, so I just had to put it in here. But then speaking of clean looking, we've got this NZXT Z970 LGA 1700 ATX motherboard, which you can pick up for only $119.99, making it $180 off retail. And then lastly today, we have this KTC H27E6, which is a 27 inch 1440p up to 320 hertz IPS gaming monitor.
monitor for only $214.99, making it $85 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more links in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like Samsung was getting a tremendous deal from Google when it comes to their Gemini AI situation that they were having on their phones. In an antitrust lawsuit, it's found out that Google is paying Samsung a lot of money every single month in order to have Gemini be one of the default AI situations on the Samsung phones. Allegedly, they started doing this back in January and it has a two year contract for them to work on this together. So the end of 2026 is when it's gonna expire. And this is very reminiscent of the fact that Google has been paying both Samsung and Apple to be the default search engine on their phones. And now it looks like they're also doing that with their AI situation, trying to be the default everywhere that you could possibly find it. And people found Intel's most recent CPUs to be a little underwhelming. We talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News that they were preparing a 200S boost overclocking profile for the Core Ultra 200 series processors that very few people have. And according to some testing that's actually out there, it does what it says it's supposed to do. It does give you better gaming performance because it now wraps in overclocking situations into the warranty, making it more officially approved by Intel. Tom's hardware found that yes, you could get about seven and a half percent total performance increase by changing a few things. Significantly less in some games, a little bit more in others, but the main thing that's happening here is that you need faster RAM. That's the big thing is it looks like Intel scales better with faster RAM at this point, going up to DDR5 8000. But according to Tom's hardware, the sweet spot's gonna be DDR5 7200 when it comes to a Core Ultra 200S situation. But I know a lot of people aren't looking to get into the new, this new generation that's out. They're looking potentially to what might be coming down the future because the Core 200 really just didn't deliver in beating the 14900K or otherwise. However, there's reports coming out that Intel's 18A process node is a huge leap that should allow them to at least bring some more competitiveness into the CPU game. One of the reasons why Nvidia is not seeing a ton of performance gains on their RTX 50 series card is that it's being produced on the same manufacturing process node. So they're not able to get extra performance or power efficiency or anything out of the actual chips besides architectural changes that they could possibly do. But according to the latest reports on Intel's 18A, they're getting 25% more performance at the same voltage and power levels. The same performance levels are more power efficient with 36% less power and allegedly has 30% more density. So you can get significant improvements by switching over to just this new process node, which is a bigger improvement than Intel got from switching to 20A, which gave 20% more density, 15% more speed, speed at 15% better power efficiency. So this 18A is looking at 30% more density, 25% faster processing, 36% reduction in power usage, making it a better upgrade overall and could potentially make it so that they are slightly competitive with AMD and whatever the Core Ultra 300 series happens to be if it happens to debut with the Intel 18A. However, there are reports that like we're getting a refresh of the Core Ultra 200, which likely won't be featuring the 18 a situation. Hopefully this is true. Hopefully Intel has things worked out with their CEO debacle that happened. They are actually moving forward, having a situation where everything is going to be more competitive moving forward because even though it's great that AMD has researched, they're doing great with their Ryzen lineup. The 9800X3D is crushing it. You still want the competitor. You don't want AMD to get too big for their britches. You don't want them to be the only option that's out on the market. And we need Intel to at least be present and competitive. And that's, that's what I'm hoping happens with this 18A situation. And you guys hope that I'd read your comments. So let's see what you had to say in yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got Donnie saying, if Intel fixes overhead, they might have the best value GPU on the market. I would argue they already do and that the, the overhead thing is a problem for certain people, but also not a problem for a lot of gamers as well. If you're on something like a 5600, which is a very popular processor, you're not likely to run into too many CPU overhead issues with the B580. If you're looking to upgrade your GPU first before you come off of Ryzen 5 2600 or an Intel i9 9900K or whatever it is, then you might run into some issues, but upgrade your CPU first. I mean, I, I honestly think that Intel has a very goodly price GPU in the market right now. And then Mr. Shrimp saying 24 gigabit Intel GPU keeping you big as hell. 
Then we got Felt6 saying, guys, they confirmed cancellation of the B700 series, like Intel themselves. They could not compete, as simple as that. They can't compete with processors and they can't compete with GPUs taking into account market share. No, they didn't. If you could point to an actual source where Intel said it publicly, that'd be great because I'm not aware of anything where Intel said that they're done with the B700 series, that they weren't going to launch a B770. Everything that we've heard of that, as far as I'm aware, has all been behind the scenes stuff. It's been either rumors or conjectures or, uh, you know, shipping manifests. It actually hasn't been an acknowledgement from Intel themselves that they're not shipping anything higher than a B580 this generation. So there's still hope um, I, if you could provide a source for what you're talking about, but I haven't seen it. I looked for it after your comment and I, I don't see that it exists. I don't think it tells actually commented on that. And I'm not gonna comment on this episode of Hot News anymore either. We'll be back here for more of the hottest tech news for you tomorrow, my friends.